Nearly 20 years ago, Lincoln introduced a very important mid-size crossover to their lineup called the MKX. Now at the time, the MKX was little more than just a guzzied up version of the Ford Edge. However, that gamble paid off because the MKX grew to become one of the best-selling vehicles in the Lincoln portfolio. Now about five years ago, Lincoln decided to rename the MKX to Nautilus when they gave the car a pretty significant refresh. However, for 2024, the company is looking to reinvent the Nautilus again by introducing a fully redesigned version. This right here, as you can see is the all new 2024 model and it rides on an all new platform. It has a new electrified powertrain underneath the hood and in the interior it has a segment first 48 inch pillar to pillar LCD display. So today we're actually out here in beautiful Palm Springs, California to finally drive the new Nautilus hybrid and the big question I went into. For those of you who are looking for a mid-size crossover SUV with more of an American flair, has Lincoln introduced enough tech and luxury to keep this model competitive? Stay tuned to find out. So before we start talking about the exterior design of the new Nautilus, and believe me, there are plenty of design details to talk about, I thought I'd pop the hood and show you guys what's powering this thing. Now, I was pleasantly surprised because when I first saw the new Nautilus, I assumed it would be fully electric, uh, but Lincoln announced that the base engine would be the carryover two liter turbo four cylinder from the old Nautilus, making 250 horsepower, 275 pound-feet of torque. It's paired up with an eight speed automatic transmission. This, however, that I'm showing you has the upgraded powertrain. It's a new powertrain for the Lincoln brand. It, it, essentially combines the two liter turbo gas engine with a powerful 100 kilowatt electric motor. Uh, and it also is hooked up to an electronic CVT transmission. Lincoln says the total system output is 310 horsepower. So around 60 more horsepower versus what you got in the non-hybrid version. And this also has uh, around 64 more horsepower versus the Lexus RX 350H, this car's main rival. The company also says fuel economy is improved when you guys go for the hybrid powertrain. This is rated to get 30 in the city, 31 on the highway, 30 miles per gallon combined. That's a six MPG improvement versus the non-hybrid Nautilus, but it gives up around six MPG compared to the RX 350H. For, for those of you who are comparing the two vehicles, this has roughly a 20 gallon fuel tank. So you're looking at over 500 miles of range. So take that electric SUVs because the range in this car should be among the best in the segment. Uh, Lincoln doesn't quote a zero to 60 time, but we'll get it out on the roads here in Palm Springs. We'll see what we can get in our actual real world testing. Uh, this vehicle should have a top speed of around 130 miles an hour. That's my personal estimate based on the previous generation Nautilus. Uh, and in terms of towing, this vehicle will tow a maximum of 1,750 pounds with the tow package, which is actually low compared to the segment. And as this car sits, it weighs in at just over 4,600 pounds. It's about 200 pounds heavier versus the non-hybrid version of the Nautilus. But let's go ahead and close up this hood and go into the exterior styling. Because I have to say, Lincoln has been really on a roll lately with their exterior designs. I really fell in love with the Aviator when that first came out five years ago. And now I'm looking at the new Nautilus and it really gives off just a grown up, more Aviator vibe to it. This particular one that I'm showing you is painted in this gorgeous shade of diamond red metallic. It actually looks more like a burgundy to me. Uh, very, very dark red with this beautiful metallic fleck. This is also the fully loaded black label edition which does include some unique styling elements. You can see the headlights, full LED design. These are the upgraded LEDs, which have a swiveling technology. Uh, they have uh, kind of a triple LED design where you have an LED daytime running light, LED turn signals, no LED fog lights down in the lower front fascia, but you can see this also includes the Lincoln Embrace. So you have this full LED light bar that goes across the entire grille. The Lincoln Star logo is illuminated. This is even more beautiful at night because as you approach the vehicle, uh, the Star logo will light up and then the LEDs will kind of you know, disperse outwards into the headlights to kind of, again, welcome you to your vehicle. The grille is also unique to the Black Label model. Uh, it has like a different kind of diamond uh, Lincoln Star logo texture in the actual grille with the gloss black finish. You have every version is going to come standard with Lincoln's Copilot 360 along with Blue Cruise. So this vehicle also comes with a 360 camera, adaptive cruise control, and hands-free driving. The black label will include that for up to four years. I think it's 90 days if you guys go for the other trims. My test car is missing the jet appearance package, which will essentially give it more black accents as opposed to the silver accents on this model, along with a slightly different front fascia. I prefer the look of this model here in this dark red color, but if you guys go for a white exterior, the jet appearance package is definitely a nice touch. But overall, let me know in the comment section below what you guys think of the styling. This definitely has that modern 
modern, sophisticated elegance, but it also is distinctively American as well. So I think Lincoln did a fantastic job with the design. Now moving around the side profile, this vehicle is now built on a new C2 architecture. So it is shared with some other Ford vehicles, but because there is no more Ford Edge here in America, this is kind of a standalone product now. And in terms of the exterior dimensions, Lincoln did make this car about three inches longer than the previous generation at 193.2 inches long. That's about an inch longer than the Lexus RX. Its wheelbase is a little over 114 inches long. That's around two inches longer than the previous generation. It's also an inch wider and an inch taller. So again, it gives you more of that, you know, aggressive, more upscale ambiance, and it looks a lot more uh, sporty as well. Now, in terms of the wheels, you can see the black label model comes standard with these kind of machine finished two-tone design to this 22 inch wheel. Uh, it's riding on a 255 by 45 R22 uh, Goodyear Eagle all season tire. Uh, the jet appearance package will include a different finished wheel which is going to be more a more black design uh, but again they're going to be the same size. You have this uh, all, all disc brakes, you have um, adaptive suspension dampers. You'll get that when you get the uh, reserve and the black label trims. The Nautilus, however, is not available with an air suspension. You have to look at something like the Aviator if you guys want to get that. I also love the full paint finish. A lot of SUVs have like that kind of uh, black cladding here, the unpainted wheel arch trim, but it just looks really upscale. It looks really elegant. And again, I think Lincoln did a fantastic job. Now, uh, over here on the door side or on the door panels, you can see um, there is this little Nautilus badge. There's a little area here where you can insert the key in case the actual intelligent access key doesn't work. That's a place where you can manually insert it. The mirrors are black painted. They're power folding. You have 360 camera around with integrated turn signals. The black roof also looks fantastic uh, with this you know, diamond red metallic exterior color. Uh, the silver roof rails you can see will be blacked out if you go for the jet appearance package. And then all Nautilus or all black label versions will also include the panoramic sunroof, which also opens up to vent air, which is nice. The door handles you can see uh, are an interesting design where uh, they don't actually move in place. There's a little pressure pad here that uh, you basically push that allows you to open the door. There's also a digital key function. And then over here, you can see um, this area here has its interesting design language where you have this kind of almost floating style roof pillar. Uh, and you also have this kind of interesting texture in the uh, rear side glass uh, as well. Now, looking at the rear of the car, uh, it also has that same elegant design theme with that full LED light blade tail light design. Uh, the turn signals are also sequential. They're um, dynamic turn signals uh, with an all LED uh, look to it. And then as you notice back here, there are no badging or badges. So there's no Lincoln Star logo. There's no Nautilus badge. There's no hybrid badge here. Uh, instead, uh, there is a Lincoln logo behind here, which is actually illuminated at night. So that again, adds a touch of elegance. You'll know this is a hybrid powertrain if you look at the front where the star logo has kind of a blue tint. Again, you can't really tell other than that when you look back here, you can see the rear bumper has a little bit more chrome trim, some nicely intruded parking sensors, no visible exhaust tips. That's something that you see on the Aviator, but not on the Nautilus. The rear wiper is kind of tucked neatly underneath this rear spoiler, along with your third brake light. And then in terms of the cargo capacity, this is where the Nautilus is still very much at the top of the class, but it's a little bit smaller than the previous generation. So this vehicle only comes as a two row. And you can see here, this version has just over or just under 36 cubic feet of total storage space. That's around two cubic feet less than last year's model. If you fold down uh, the second row seats, which you can basically just push a button here and that will kind of hydraulically push the seat down. That expands the cargo to around 68 cubic feet of space. Keep in mind, if you guys go for the base premier trim, you'll have around 71 cubic feet of space. And that's because that model doesn't have the panoramic sunroof. So it adds a little bit more space uh, underneath the floor here. You can see Lincoln does give you a temporary spare tire. So you don't have to deal with a fix a flat kit. So once you get past the elegant new design of the exterior for the Nautilus, when you step inside the interior, this is where you can really tell Lincoln spent the big bucks here because again, this is a luxury SUV, their best selling luxury SUV. So the company really wanted to kind of create that wow factor. But before we start talking about all the screens in this car, I want to mention the door panels because this model that we're showing you is the fully loaded, a fully loaded black label trim. You actually have this beautiful real leather over the top of the door panel with this real uh, stitching. Uh, you have leather padding over here where your elbows would rest. You have metal speaker covers. This model also comes with the 28 speaker Revel Ultima premium sound system. Uh, you have uh, three person memory seats. You have these metal accented window controls, which have a bespoke feel to them along with the power window and power folding mirror controls. This area here is a gloss black area where it actually has 
uh, some ambient lighting that's interactive. So that will actually come on and glow at night. It also carries over onto the other side and to the rear seat. That all adds to the whole Lincoln Embrace experience. And I think a lot of people are going to appreciate that. Now the seats, you can see my tester has the 24 way perfect position seats, which are heated, ventilated and massaging. The controls are located right here where you'd expect it as opposed to the door panel, which I actually prefer. Now, as I step inside, Lincoln didn't mention the ground clearance of this car, but it has that nice, easy step in height. When I come in and shut the door, the door has a nice solid sounding thunk. So remember this adds to that impression of quality and it shows off the solidity of this new C2 architecture. Now here's the key fob for the new Nautilus. You can see this is basically the older fob that we've seen so many other Ford and Lincoln vehicles use. There is a Lincoln badge here. I don't particularly love this fob because of how bulky it is and it also feels a little cheap, but it also has your usual you know, buttons here your, for unlock, lock, remote start, power lift gate, and panic. Lincoln also offers your phone as a key option. If you guys don't want to carry around this key fob, you can basically use your phone to start the vehicle up and lock the car but starting it up you can see the start stop button is located right here where you'd expect it to be put your foot on the brake and then when you push the button you can see this model that i'm showing you is the hybrid version so there's no traditional engine starter noise instead the vehicle has that symphonic chime which is unique to lincoln vehicles and everything just kind of whirs to life and i have to say guys when you first get into this interior a lot of you are probably going to be a little overwhelmed because you probably have never seen something like this this is a segment first it's a 48 inch uh, pillar to pillar panoramic display so you can see over here on this side there's a 24 inch display and then you can see there's a second screen here that's another 24 inches for essentially the passenger side. Now this screen is very custom customizable, but as you probably notice, it's not a touch screen because it's so far away. It is all controlled via the 11.1 inch screen here in the center, where this is a touch screen. This is where you interact with the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It's wireless as well. So Lincoln is not doing away with the wireless phone mirroring like some companies. But overall, it definitely creates a wow factor. It makes a great first impression. The steering wheel in this car is also uh, a really co interesting combination of new and old school because it has a flat bottom and a flat top design. You can see why it has a flat top design because you want to be able to see over the steering wheel and look at your instrument panel, which is a really important touch. The steering wheel itself has a power tilt and telescoping adjustment with a good amount of adjustability and range. You have some touch sensitive buttons here where if you just kind of rest your finger on that, it shows you in the upper screen, whether it's the volume control, whether you want to skip music. The other side here is for the adaptive cruise control where you can turn on the blue cruise function. You can see the blue cruise eyebrow display here is located right here. That's essentially a camera that watches your face to make sure that you're actually paying attention to the road. Uh, no paddles behind the steering wheel uh, like on some competing vehicles. The horn. It sounds pretty nondescript, but appropriate given the size of the vehicle. And then looking at the rest of the materials, you can see that beautiful leather stitching carries over onto the upper part of the dash here. You also have more leather along this lower portion where it is soft touch injection molded, uh, soft touch as well. You have more beautiful leather here with the contrasting stitching. In fact, this interior color is called chalet. Uh, it's like a chalet Venetian leather. This is ex exclusive to the black label models. The leather doesn't feel the plushest when you first touch it, but when you're actually sitting in the seat, the 24 way per perfect position seats also feel really comfortable and supportive. And they don't feel quite as annoying as other Lincolns that have the 30 way perfect position seats. So it's kind of nice that they don't have quite as many adjustments on this uh, version versus something like the Aviator or uh, the new Navigator. Now I want to come back to the dis display here because there's a lot to talk about with this new infotainment system. Now, first of all, this right here is going to essentially function as your instrument panel and as a heads-up display. So there's no heads-up display projecting onto the windshield because this basically sits at your line of sight. You're going to have your GPS function with this. This system also has Google built in. It's an Android automotive based system. Your GPS map display will kind of mirror over here. This is again for the driver. And then this side here is for the passenger. So there are three different cards there where you can kind of customize those cards to your liking and you do that by going into the screen here. So if you tap this little icon right here, you can see that brings up the three different cards. I have it on fuel economy. I have it on uh, media and I have it on weather. You can also kind of interchange and move those cards around if you prefer it to be in a different order. Or if I want, I can also get rid of fuel economy. I can put the clock there if I prefer. I can put your you know trip computer information instead of the weather. So that all looks very nice. And I also love the graphics. Lincoln says that they worked hard by significantly improving the processing speed and improving the screen clarity. Now, I also want to point out that it is very, very bright uh, here in Palm Springs and the camera due to the refresh rate is probably showing the screen look a little wonky. I wanna reassure you guys, it doesn't look that way. 
when you're actually seeing it in person, the screen clarity is very crystal clear. Although I do wish it was a little bit brighter, but again, it is very bright here in Palm Springs. If this is too much information overload, there's a little calm button here where I can tap that and that will essentially black out the screen over there, still giving you that background, but all the information goes away. It also simplifies the way this looks over here. That again, just gives you a simple tachometer along with your controls and whatnot, your fuel uh, gauge and then your temperature gauge. But again, if you don't wanna do that, just go back to or uncheck the comm display and that'll bring up everything, all the information that you want. Now, coming over back to this center screen here, you can see there's your wireless phone uh, mirroring. So there's the Apple CarPlay function. It also offers Android Auto. I can also tap that button here on the screen and that'll expand it out to essentially take up more of the screen. This screen actually, if you can believe it, is around two inches smaller than the 2023 Nautilus. Remember Lincoln gave it a screen refresh in 2023, I believe, where you had a 13.2 inch display. I do like the way this screen is you know, positioned. It's really easy to interact with it, but I kind of wish that some of the black border that Lincoln has around the screen is kind of done away. They should have just gone with at least a 12.3 inch screen, to be honest. Although again, this is just the main screen that you use to kind of interact with the car. Going back to the smaller display, you can see there's your usual sources there to go back to the native system. There's, there's kind of like the home display here. You can see there's your Google Maps, uh, which it has Google built in, and it also has voice commands. So I can say things like, okay, Google, navigate to the nearest Starbucks. So you can see there, it pulled up the nearest Starbucks, which is 13 miles away. It also will project it into the screen up there. If you guys would rather have like your audio information over here or go back to the CarPlay here, you can still see the screen over there. So again, all of that is a really nice touch and it really shows that Lincoln was thinking about you know, all the details when you're kind of interacting with this with this system. Now, in terms of the climate controls, you can see the climate controls are located in the screen. So this is very much like a Tesla where the vents that you're noticing don't actually have any like manual adjustments here and that's because it's all controlled on the screen here kind of like a tesla now at first some of you may not like that it's something to get used to but it does offer some nice features here where you can go into there you can basically tell the system to uh, blow all the air all over your body if you guys don't like that you can do off body you can do motion where the vents will move side to side and up and down, up and down to kind of flow the air around which is also a, a really nice touch you can also do the same thing for the passenger side in addition to the driver's side uh, and everything just has a much more modern uh, feel to it. If I go to the vehicle settings here, you can see this is where you can access all your vehicle sources and settings. So there's your drive mode selector here. You can see there are five different drive modes from normal, conserve, which is like an eco. There's the excite, which is the sport drive mode. That's also gonna throw in a tachometer that's kind of at the very top, which for some reason it's not showing up right now. There's also a slippery, deep snow conditions uh, and whatnot. So it also shows you a pretty cool graphic, uh, which is also nice to you know show off in terms of the details. Going to the seat controls here, you can see there's where you can adjust the lumbar adjustments for the seats. You can also activate the massage function. Right now, uh, I have it on the relax mode. And I have to tell you guys, the massage function on this car works well. It's also on the passenger side uh, for those of you who want to have the massage function there. The digital scent is also new uh, for the Lincoln Company or Lincoln Motor Company. You can see I have it on the Mystic Forest right now, which you can set to three different levels of intensity. And I have to say the smells in this car smells really good. So there are three different options. Lincoln says they're going to add two more later on where you can essentially buy the scents from your dealership. It wafts a perfume in here. It smells really, you know, upscale and premium. And it even tells you how much of the scent is actually remaining. So again, that's a pretty nice touch. That's something that I've typically found in some Mercedes and Audi vehicles that work really well. Uh, there's also a rejuvenation function where it will essentially create like an ambiance where you have these five and 10 minute intervals. For some reason, my test car is not showing it, but if you go into those rejuvenation functions, um, you can basically you know, create the mood lighting, the music, it'll recline the seat, it'll massage the seat, it'll waft the scent. That's a great feature to have if you had a long day at the office and you come into your parking lot and whatnot, or your parking spot, uh, and you just wanna kinda just relax in the car for a couple minutes. Lincoln says, however, that doesn't function when you're actually in an enclosed area because the engine has to run when you're in that feature. But again, it's a nice little touch that really just creates that luxury feel that you expect from a Lincoln car, uh, a Lincoln brand. Now looking over here at the center stack, you can see your transmission selector is here. This controls the eCVT. When I put the car into reverse, you can see there's your full 360 camera. It actually shows the top screen here, which I prefer because it's actually bigger versus the screen down here. It gives you trajectory, parking sensors. It has rear cross traffic alert, front cross traffic, braking and whatnot. Those features, again, are standard equipment on every Nautilus trim. So a lot of competitors make you pay extra for that not here not not so with the lincoln nautilus which is a great touch you have some actual physical controls here for your brake hold your hazard controls your automatic parallel parking 
Uh, there's also a quick control here for max uh, front defrost, your camera control where you can just push that button, it goes into the 360 camera. And then your drive mode selector, you can also push this button here and that'll pull up the drive modes here. And then you have to kind of select which drive mode you want uh, by actually tapping the screen over here. So that's all nice. I also love the glass control that you get for this massive volume knob, which is actually a, a knob which is illuminated at night. So that's all very impressive. There's 64 different colors that you can choose from the ambient lighting in here, which I'll have to show you guys later on at night when I have one for a full week. You can see my wireless phone charging pad is right here. My iPhone 14 Pro Max fits nicely. You have two USB-C charging ports, an A and a C. There's a nice little lid that covers up this area. I like also that Lincoln didn't use piano black plastic to kind of get fingerprint marks and scratches. It's kind of a lighter uh, plastic instead. There's a nice padded center console here. If you open this up, you can see it's a pretty deep storage area. All my camera equipment actually fits in here. You have another power outlet there. Uh, along with two more USB charging ports just to charge. If you wanna plug in, you have to plug in from that system over here. Uh, above me, you can see the black label includes beautiful microfiber suede on the headliner and on the A pillars and on the B pillars. So again, sweating those details, you have ambient lighting here. Sunglass holder, which is nice. A lot of brands are actually getting rid of that. And then you also can see above me, there's the panoramic sunroof, which also opens up to vent air, only over the two front seats, but that's kind of the case with most vehicles, but you can see you can actually open it up a little bit more and that lets in a lot of fresh air and light, which is a great touch. There's also a power retractable shade if you guys don't prefer uh, the lighting uh, to kind of hit you in the head. Uh, the sound system also sounds incredible. If you guys are an audiophile, I highly recommend going for the 28 speaker Revel Ultima sound system. It really goes head to head with the Mark Levinson's and the Bang & Olufsen's and the Burmester's that you're gonna find in a lot of competing vehicles. The glove compartment you can see over here is a little bit small actually. It's a bin style. It's damped in line with felt. It doesn't open up very large, but I guess it still provides some nice storage. And I appreciate the fact that it's just a traditional manual lid instead of a button that you have to push. But overall, uh, for a car that you know, is a an early build model. I mean, this car is already in dealerships. The build quality feels really nice. The tech seems to be working really well. And remember, this car is also built in China. So I'm definitely noticing the build quality feels a lot more tightly put together versus the last Lincoln Corsair or Aviator that I drove that are that are built in either Mexico or in North America. Now, stepping into the rear seat of the new Nautilus, this is where Lincoln really focused its efforts on giving this back seat class leading space. In fact, Lincoln says you have 43.1 inches of legroom. 43.1 literally puts it at the top of the class. This has around six more inches of legroom than something like the Lexus RX, around five more inches of legroom versus something like the BMW X5. You can see the seats themselves. They also have a nice recline function where you can have it in the upright position or slightly reclined. You can also obviously fold the seat down to expand the cargo capacity capacity. And this is a feature that I was surprised with. The seats actually do slide forward and back. I don't really know why that's necessary considering the fact this car is only a two row SUV, but it is a nice little touch to have, especially if you guys need to increase the car space or you need to move, I guess, your child seat forward to get closer to the driver's area. Now, getting inside, you can see as I get back here, the step in height is easy, just like the front. Shutting the door, you can see the door panel materials also are high quality uh, materials. This is the same leather with the contrast or the actual stitching. More of that piano black plastic with the ambient lighting uh, strips in there. Nice leather padding, of course, over here with the metal speaker areas. The window controls still have that high quality feel. All four of the windows are one touch up down. And then this is essentially where I have the seat to drive and look at all the legroom space that I have in here. I can easily get sit back here and cross my legs. The floor is almost completely flat so you can you know, fit three people across pretty well. There's an actual household power outlet here. You have your three level heated back seats along with your uh, rear seat air vents. Uh, no ventilated seats. Lincoln does not offer ventilated seats in this model. That's something that you can get on something like the new Lexus RX. Uh, you can see there are two USB-C charging ports, two of them on the driver's seat and on the passenger seat, along with two storage cubbies. So in terms of the rear seat space, there is a ton of room in here, a ton of features. And then if you fold down this, you can see there's an armrest that gives you a little bit of storage and cup holders that also uh, pop out. In terms of the headroom space, you can see that beautiful microfiber suede continues over into the rear area. I have a decent amount of headroom for somebody 5.7. Obviously the panel roof takes up space, but I think for most people, this back seat is going to be very usable, especially if you need to put car seats back here. So here we are finally behind the wheel of the completely redesigned 2024 Lincoln Nautilus. And we are starting out this drive in the hybrid powertrain, which for 1500 bucks extra, I strongly recommend you just go ahead and go for the hybrid powertrain. Let's go ahead and see what we can get zero to 60 wise in this car. I have it in excite mode. Definitely, it doesn't really love brake torquing, but <laughs> it works when you brake torque it. Let's see what we can get. 
7.37 seconds. Now that is with it going on a 2% uphill gradient. So um, I assume this car will probably break into the six second mark if you're on more of a level surface. If we can find a better road later on, uh, we'll try another zero to 60 test, hopefully on a flat road. But again, Lincoln didn't quote a zero to 60 time, but this car has about 310 horsepower. It has around 4,600 pounds of weight. It has that CVT transmission. Uh, which is going to be better for fuel efficiency. And that time should be pretty similar to what you're gonna find in like a Lexus RX 350H. I mean, although this car, its powertrain and horsepower specs kind of has it fall in between an RX 350 and an RX 450H plus and an RX 500H. Lexus offers three different hybrid powertrains, whereas Lincoln only offers one. But I still think that for the money, this powertrain should be worth the extra charge because it also gets 30 MPG combined. Now on this short, you know, media drive, I'm not going to be able to really test out the fuel efficiency. Uh, I'll have to wait until I get one back home to test it out. But later on, we should be able to get into a gas powered model, which has uh, 250 horsepower. So around 60 horsepower less, less than this car. And we'll see what we can get uh, zero to 60 wise to compare. But really, most people who buy a Nautilus aren't really going to care about zero to 60 times. What you're going to care about is the overall feel of the car. And this is where the Nautilus really reminds you when you are behind the wheel that this belongs in the same price category and you know competitive space as a Lexus RX. Not entirely sure that there are people that were considering a BMW X5 or Mercedes-Benz GLE would cross shop this vehicle because it definitely feels more along the lines of the luxury spectrum. The black label that we're driving here has the adaptive dampers. I have it in, in its Excite mode, which is a sportier setting, uh, although I really kind of wish Lincoln would change the name from Excite because this car, I have to say, is not super exciting to drive, which is not the purpose of this car. It's actually supposed to be comfortable, luxurious, and quiet. And that's where Lincoln really nailed it because the ride quality with the adaptive dampers, even though we're on these big 22 inch wheels, it just glides down the road with the level of quietness and refinement that you expect from a luxury brand. There's very little road noise, very little uh, engine noise, very little wind noise. In fact, even though this car has a CVT with a two liter turbo, I barely hear the engine at all. Uh, there are no paddles for this vehicle, no manual shift mode because again that's not the purpose of this car uh, but uh, the steering in this vehicle is also very light it's electric power steering it doesn't really transmit much in terms of feedback so again even though I'm in the excite mode as we go around these corners here looking for or, or attacking these twisty roads going up this mountain here in Palm Springs uh, you definitely feel the weight of this car you notice that it's you know not built for enthusiastic driving, but it certainly will hold its own. The seats are also pretty comfortable. We are we are riding in the 24-way perfect position seats, which has the uh, active massage function. They're heated and ventilated. Every Nautilus comes standard with heated and ventilated seats, actually, which is impressive, along with uh, adaptive cruise control standard, Blue Cruise, which hopefully we can get a chance to test out the Blue Cruise later on. Lincoln used to call that Active Glide, but now they just call it Blue Cruise, which I think is a nice change. Uh, and then the visibility in this car, as I you know go around this corner, I can see out of the front, the side, and the rear pretty nicely, although I'm surprised Lincoln's not offering a digital camera rear view mirror. That's something that you can get in like the Lexus RX. Um, but it's a good piece of tech to have if you, you know, have the you know back seats full of you know tall people or you have it uh, packed to the to the ceiling with stuff and whatnot, you can kind of see, you can still see out of the back, which uh, would have been a nice feature for them to have. But overall, I'm impressed. This car has that luxury comfort feel that I'm looking for. Uh, it's not the quickest accelerating vehicle. I mean, I would love to see Lincoln do, you know, even something with more power, like 400 horsepower, a plug-in hybrid version. I mean, if you guys are replacing the old 2.7 liter V6 Nautilus with this model, you're gonna notice the hybrid is not going to be as fast, but put my foot down. You can actually feel it surges ahead very nicely with the electric motor's torque. The turbo engine does offer, uh, or does, I do notice a little bit of turbo lag in the turbo engine powertrain, but the CVT is really responsive. It kind of puts you right in the meat of the power band nicely. As we go around some more corners here, you can definitely feel this car's extra weight. And uh, <laughs> let's see if we can pass this Explorer. Yes, okay. <laughs> But yes, we'll go around this corner here. Yeah, you can definitely notice the steering it doesn't provide much heft. The suspension feels soft. So if you want to attack a fit your favorite back road in this car, um, you're going to notice that if you're comparing it to like a Porsche Cayenne or a BMW X5, those vehicles are just going to feel a lot more enthusiastic. Lincoln doesn't really have a performance vision, you know, to address this, but I think for the majority of Nautilus buyers, you're going to really like the way this car feels. Uh, you're gonna like the seats. They're comfortable and supportive. 
Uh, it has an impressive amount of technology. I actually love the fact that you have the GPS displayed up there on that panoramic display while also having it down here. Everything is controlled via this touchscreen, obviously, but we'll go ahead and we'll hop into the gas powered model and we'll compare the powertrain differences. But I still strongly believe that most buyers for the extra 1500 bucks, you're gonna prefer the, the added power and efficiency of the hybrid powertrain. So welcome to the interior of the gas only version of the Nautilus. Things are pretty much similar to the hybrid version, although you do actually get a tachometer in the instrument panel, which the hybrid, I couldn't get it to pull up. This model that we're driving is also the black label with the redwood themed interior. So as opposed to the Chalette themed interior, which was more like a beige, this is kind of like a nice little reddish brown color, which I actually really appreciate a lot. I think it looks really good, especially with this white exterior color. But um, right off the bat, obviously the gas engine only version is going to have noticeably less power and torque. I mean, we're dealing with 250 horsepower, 275 pound feet of torque. We don't know the torque figure of the hybrid only version, but we're also driving around in a car that has around 300 pounds less weight. So it doesn't have as much weight to lug around. And you definitely notice that in the corners. I'll talk about that when we find more twisty roads to you know show you guys the handling dynamics. But uh, Lincoln doesn't quote a zero to 60 time. We got in the upper sevens to low, uh, our upper or low sevens to upper sixes on the hybrid version. Now keep in mind, we are at about a 5,000 feet above sea level here. And I found a straight road. Let's go ahead and see what we can get zero to 60 wise. We'll brake torque it. Eight-speed auto instead of a CVT. All right, we got 7.02 seconds there. Now that's with it going slightly downhill. Uh, I imagine if we turn around and redid it, I probably would get closer to the eight second mark. So this zero to 60 time is pretty similar to the hybrid, but again, the conditions aren't necessarily the same. To get a proper test, I need to drive these cars on the same stretch of road where it's a completely flat surface. I'll have to wait until I get one back home to test. Uh, I would estimate that just from you know the seat of my pants and feeling this car's acceleration, this model is likely going to be about a half a second slower than the hybrid. I mean, yes, the hybrid has more power, but it also has more weight. And that's gonna contribute, of course, to the car feeling a little bit more peppy. Now, where I do notice a huge difference is in the cornering and the handling dynamics. This car feels a little bit more playful in the corners. The steering is still light and numb and devoid of feel. In the Excite mode, the dampers get a little bit stiffer. The steering gets a little bit heavier. And overall, this car's mission is still very much to be a luxury SUV. If you guys are looking for something that's more, you know, fun in the corners, Porsche and BMW will be happy to sell you, you know, their version of a mid-sized luxury SUV. Lincoln, I'm really just happy at the fact that they, you know, stuck with, you know, what works for them. And they build comfortable, you know, luxury vehicles that are quiet, that are smooth. And this car definitely has all of those traits. I think people are gonna be really impressed with that. I mean, especially if you're cross shopping this with a Lexus RX, it very much has the same kind of feel dynamically in terms of acceleration. The two liter turbo uh, has, I think, enough power for most people. Personally, I still think that you should go for the hybrid. I mean, I put my foot down here. The eight speed is smooth. It's also responsive and it really gets the engine into the meat of the power band. And you'll be wanting to rev it up because this engine I did notice has some noticeable turbo lag when I first put my foot down. Um, as we go around this corner here, I hear a little bit of tire screeching. Uh, this model here has the 22 inch wheels on a 255 summer, or I'm sorry, all season tire. So not much in terms of grip, although the chassis feels like it could easily handle more. Uh, I kind of wish that Lincoln would have thrown some paddle shifters on this model. Now that we have actual gears and eight speed auto, it would be nice to be able to have some manual control. There's a, a low setting in the transmission, but there's no way of just manually taking control of each of those gears and, you know, having that kind of ability to do that put my foot down here i can definitely feel the uh elevation this car's power feels a little bit soft here so i am looking forward to getting one back home for a week at sea level where we can actually test out what the power is going to be i mean these turbo engines definitely help at elevation like this but the air is definitely still a little bit thin but overall i'm impressed this car whether you go for it in hybrid or you go for it in the gas only you know powertrains there's something so smooth so refined so you know, luxury about this car. And it feels a lot nicer than any other Ford vehicle. I mean, the old Nautilus to me always just felt like a guzzied up version of the Ford Edge. And now that we don't have an Edge and we're on this new platform, it's really given Lincoln the ability to kind of push the envelope and push this car into a class that feels like it belongs 
you know, in the same, at the same dinner table as like a BMW, as a Mercedes, as a Lexus. And I think that's important with uh, Lincoln trying to improve their sales, improve their brand reputation. This car is definitely a very impressive vehicle. You know, if you're looking at it from the tech department, you're looking at it from the driving perspective. Uh, do I wish it was a little bit sportier? Sure, but at the same time, that's not the mission of this car. And most buyers in this segment, I think, are, could care less about sporty driving dynamics. They just want it to be comfortable, smooth, quiet, competent, refined, and easy to drive. And I think the Nautilus pretty much checks all those boxes. So with a little over 24,000 Nautiluses sold in the U.S. in 2023, this vehicle was technically the second best-selling Lincoln in the U.S. last year. The Corsair, the smaller, more, less expensive SUV, technically outsold the Nautilus by about 50 units. But still, this vehicle represents one of the best-selling Lincolns in all time. So obviously, a new version is going to be a very big deal for the brand. And you can tell after spending some time driving the new Nautilus, Lincoln obviously wanted to sweat the details here and really raise the bar and and what your expectations are for a mid-size luxury SUV. The powertrain of this hybrid uh, model is definitely going to be the one to get. As you guys saw, it should have a zero to 60 time that's going to be a little bit faster than a Lexus RX 350h. I'll have to wait until I get one for a full week to test out the fuel economy because on paper, the fuel economy of this vehicle does trail the Lexus by about six MPG, but still 30 MPG and 500 miles of range is excellent efficiency from something that's this big, that's this heavy, that's this luxurious. In terms of sportiness, this is where the Nautilus obviously is going to leave you disappointed. If you guys are looking for a, a midsize SUV that drives more like a sports sedan, head over to your local BMW dealership for an X5 because that's going to be the driving enthusiast model along with the Porsche Cayenne. However, those models are going to be significantly more expensive. The technology in this car is also very impressive. For you know a car company that has had very spottiness in terms of reliability and in terms of you know the infotainment system, their new Google operating system here with that 48 inch panoramic display. For the time that I spent with this car, the screen worked basically the entire time without giving me issues. My phone connected, it didn't freeze up or crash at times while I was filming. And that was also very impressive. I'm looking forward to getting some time with this vehicle for a week where I can actually drive it at night and see what the ambient lighting looks like. The digital scent feature also, it makes you feel like you're driving a special car, kind of that same feeling I get when I drive a lot of the German and European brands, which are far more expensive than the new Nautilus. The backseat also has a ton of space. It has near top of the class cargo figures. Uh, and even if you guys go for the base engine, the base engine should deliver enough performance. But again, for 1500 bucks, you may as well go for the hybrid. Now, if you guys are looking to get your hands on the new Nautilus, this vehicle went on sale in January for the gas engine. The hybrid went on sale about a week or two ago. And Lincoln says the base price for a Premier trim with standard all-wheel drive and all the tech, like the heated and cooled seats, the panoramic, uh, 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 panoramic display, um, the Lincoln Blue Cruise function, this car starts at $50,400 for the base model. That's about $1,000 more versus something like a Lexus RX. It's obviously more expensive, a couple grand more than the previous generation, but I'd say it's worth that extra money considering all the upgrades that you get. Most of you are probably going to add the reserve trim for an extra $5,000. Uh, from there on, you can also add you know, the reserve 203 upgrade package or 202 upgrade packages to kind of bring it closer to the black label. This black label that I'm showing you, however, starts at around $74,000. 74 grand is a lot of money. That is definitely going to be more expensive than some of the Japanese com competitors. This particular one here with the hybrid powertrain with the upcharge for this diamond red metallic exterior color comes in at $78,740. I know almost $80,000 for a Nautilus sounds ridiculous, but I will remind you guys that a fully loaded BMW X5 can easily be around $90,000. A Porsche Cayenne is over $100,000. An RX is around 70 to 75 grand for a fully loaded like RX 500H, which I'd argue has more performance versus this model. But I have to say, Lincoln has definitely created something special here, and it feels a lot more upscale and better built versus other versions of Lincolns that, again, are not built in China. This one here is the first Lincoln to be built, I believe, in China for the US market. And it really is a strong showing that I think is going to surprise a lot of people. With all that said, hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the brand new 2024 Lincoln Nautilus Hybrid in this black label trim. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook. And as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.